Okay. So I think now it's time to introduce uh, our introducer. So tonight, uh, Narash is going to introduce uh, Andy, um, who will be speaking tonight. So let me introduce uh, Narash, who is our, uh, our membership uh, chair on the uh, board of the Los Angeles Birders. Thanks, Mark. Uh, let me put up this slide. All right, hi everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker tonight, Andy Birch. Andy has been birding in Los Angeles County for 25 years and is usually found birding Griffith Park or the LA River around Glendale and Los Feliz. Andy has written several articles on challenging bird identification, including dowichers, loons, immature orioles, pipits, peewees, and he's currently working on a book on Empidonax identification. He is a well-known illustrator of birds. Uh, you see some of his beautiful illustrations on this slide. Over the past 30 years, he has illustrated identification plates for field guides, and he has created brilliant illustrations for the front covers of major birding magazines in North America and Europe. You can also see some of his work at his website, andybirch.com. Lab members will be familiar with Andy from webinars he has presented on nocturnal flight call recordings, and on Empidonax identification with Cinti Lee. If you haven't seen those presentations, I strongly encourage you to check them out uh, on our website. They've been uh, super popular. We're pleased to have Andy as a valued member of the Los Angeles Birders Board of Directors. Tonight, uh, just as shorebirds have finally begun to show up in Los Angeles, Andy is going to help us identify some of them. The tricky tringas, greater yellow legs, lesser yellow legs, solitary sandpipers, and similar birds. Um, these species can be sometimes difficult to identify, especially when they're on their own and you can't gauge size. Uh, but Andy is here to help us uh, sort through them. Please welcome Andy Birch. Andy. Thank you, Naresh. Very, very kind. Here we go. Share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see that. So um, let me actually just try, there we go. So thank you again. So here we have this uh, helpful comparison shot from John Feenster of the, the three main confusion species in LA County. Um, the Tringa genus covers a little over a dozen species worldwide and we'll try to touch on all of them tonight with special focus on yellow leg, solitary sandpiper and other sort of similar regularly occurring LA County confusion species. So in this photo here, we have greater yellow legs on the right, um, less yellow legs in the middle and a solitary sandpiper on, on the far left. And I think you would look at this and you might think, you know, <clears throat> why do we even need an ID discussion? You know, all three species are, are starkly different sizes. Um, and in terms of plumage, the, you know, the yellow legs are, are very similar, um, but solitary sandpiper also looks very different in plumage too. However, you know, we're not always lucky to see them all together side by side like this. You know, often they are alone, making size assessment difficult to judge. Um, the plumages of the yellow legs are exceedingly similar. And so it requires this holistic approach, assessing multiple features when looking at lone individuals. We really need to look at the whole bird um, rather than a single feature. You know, the ratio of bill length to head length is a, is a very good feature um, as is structure but perhaps you know, a little more variable than we realize. And call isn't necessarily that easy to distinguish either. Um, it's not an issue for LA County specifically, but a, but a quick look through eBird photos across North America shows there is um, you know, a high degree of uncertainty on separating the yellow legs from each other and also solitary sandpiper from less yellow legs. And even will it can be confusing for the unwary when you know, seen out of context. Um, for instance, a, a migrant willet away from the beaches on an inland lake or far inland on the LA River can be, you know, quite a confusing bird to identify. So with that in mind, before we dive in, I thought maybe we'd start with a little quiz just to see what we know and what we don't know. So who wants to play so you think you know your tringers? So we'll start with the first quiz bird, and I don't know, Mark, if you're able to put up 
the poll for Quiz Bird One. Yes, I will put the poll up for Quiz Bird One. Um, and for those who are on the uh, live stream, the the uh, possible answers are greater yellow legs, lesser yellow legs, solitary sandpiper, wandering tattler, willet, or yellow leg spa. We were going to put mallard as uh, one, but uh, unfortunately, we didn't do that. And so maybe and then, we'll give. Yeah, we'll do. I think there's, I can't remember, there's like six birds here in a row here so we'll just go through these and then we'll do the answers for those six you know after we get through the the six birds mm -hmm. so we have still votes coming in please put in your votes it's a little tricky i i admit i chose some trickier birds you know we can't actually see the legs on this one mm -hmm. so we're having to look at a few other features on it Okay, we have about, come on, anybody? We're gonna, we're gonna um, close this out in 10 seconds. And it is now closing out. Okay. Great, let's move on to quiz bird two. Okay. Same, same answers. Two. Same answers and here is quiz bird two. Wait, hold on. Let's make sure I have two correct. Okay. No, 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 no. That's not what I want. There we go. Here we go. That says one. What bird is? Does that meant? Does that meant to say two, or is it not? Let me make sure afterwards and see if I messed anything up. It really, it had, yeah, at the end of the day, it, it, it doesn't matter. It's more you get people thinking and talking. Mm -hmm. This one is, at least is showing us its legs. Yes. Okay, so we'll close this out after about 10 more seconds. Okay, closing the poll. Now let's make sure that I have that correct. Yes, good. So quiz bird three. Same answers again. Same answers again for quiz bird three. Good. Got about 70% uh, voting. Way better than national elections. Great. Everyone's very brave. I know. This is, this is fantastic. <laughs> I wouldn't be so brave. I might, <laughs> I might be wishing there was a mallard on here. Isn't <laughs> exactly. Just to say mallard. OK, uh, let me go 10 more seconds. And of course, uh, to repeat, it's all anonymous. No one can see what anybody's putting in. So there's yeah, that's that's right. All we have is statistics of what people say. Yeah, there's no embarrassment for anybody or any reason to feel worried about right. picking a wrong answer. Okay, ending that one. That was number three. Okay, let's do yeah, number four. Birds in here, and it's the one that's got bird four with an arrow. Okay. So the rightmost bird. The right hand bird. So it's, there we go. Oh, here we go. We're getting up to 80% voting. Fantastic. Right, Let's go 10 more seconds. Chris bird four, that's good. Yeah, that's people know bird four. Excellent. Or think they know bird four. <laughs> okay, that one's ending. Let's have a look at five. Okay. Another, another sneaky bird not showing us its legs. 
here's five. And votes are coming in. Decided not to try to sing the Jeopardy theme. <laughs> it's, it's too much. You got too much going on. Mike. I have too much, uh, too many things to do. Impossible. <laughs> oh wow, we have eighty-two percent voting on this one. Hey, so so more, more people are are uh, getting brave. Great. Okay, ten more seconds just for the final votes to come in. So if you haven't decided yet, you only have a few more seconds. Okay, I'm gonna close that poll. Now on bird six, just to preface, it's one of my photos. There's a few photos in this deck that are mine and they are all the out of focus, silhouetted, <laughs> terrible, terrible shot. So thus, thus the easiest ones to identify. <laughs> 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 and, and so all the beautiful photographs, I make sure everyone's got credit here, all the beautiful photographs are not mine. Um, but you know, my, my shorebirding, as Naresh said, a lot of it is confined to the LA River in Glendale. And uh, you know, for some reason, whichever side of the river on you're on, whatever time of the day, everything's always silhouetted and distant in the heat haze. That's my and on the other side of the river. Yeah, that's my excuse, <laughs> obviously. It's, it's okay, terrible. so do I put up bird six? But here's bird six, and it's there's several birds there, but it's the bird in the middle with bird six written above it. Okay, so here's bird six. Yeah, sometimes that 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 helps. A lot of times with these guys, it helps to have multiple birds in the right, right. The, that are visible. Yeah, I find I take a lot of pictures and think, well, I'll be a good quiz bird picture. It's mostly because it's just terribly photographed. It's my, <laughs> uh, it's my only skill with the camera. Yeah, I get a lot of quiz bird pictures where I have, you know, birds that you know hide their head somewhere or you know, <laughs> something like that, look away. Okay, let me do about 10 more seconds. People aren't quite as brave. Oh, there we go. Now we have some brave people. And, and you know, obviously this is silhouetted, it's moving. And like like all of these photos, these are just little snapshots in time. It's it's actually, sure. it's probably unfair, these these pictures, but it it's okay. the spirit of a bit of fun, so. So that was bird six. All right. So let's go through and, and go through each one of these birds. And if it's possible to have the answers for quiz bird one yes i can put quiz bird one so here are the results for quiz bird one uh, 54 percent picked greater right. yellow legs right. good people are feeling confident about those their yellow legs so that's great so that is it is actually a greater yellow legs um this bird was a, a vagrant found on the pharaohs in sort of north Western Europe. Um, and I think it, it was a little bit puzzling because, you know, it's alone, it's out of place, uh, out of context. It didn't seem to strike the observer as particularly long build or having much of an upturned bill. And um, in, in Europe, the default yellow legs is lesser. Um, but, you know, it's in alternate plumage photographed in May. Um, and so, you know, was helpful in, 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 in getting the observer to the right ID. Um, you know, in, in this alternate plumage, note that the black and white checkered upper parts, the, the coarse black streaking here on the neck, extensive black barring on the flanks that extends to the belly. Um, not a particularly long billed bird, nor is the bill especially upturned. Um, you know, however, notice, um, you know, it does have a very bold white eye ring um, in, this, in this side photo that we can now see. Um, it's the same bird. Um, we can see like a, a slightly palish base to the bill, um, you know, which sort of helps to make the nostril stand out. Um, in terms of bill length, you know, you may have heard this sort of magic ratio that greater has a bill length, you know, one and a quarter to one and a half times the width of the head. 
uh, whereas lesser has a shorter bill that is barely longer than the width of the head. Um, this bird to me actually looks like it might be on the shorter end and could well be in that range of overlap with the long billed lesser. Um, the, this sort of bill length feature we're going to look at, uh, you know, a bit tonight and look at sort of the variability of that. Um, it's certainly something you need to practice a fair bit to get a sense of, you know, how to estimate this in the field. Um, you know, I've, I've, people have described it, if you can look at it in the field and imagine that you're sort of flipping the bill backwards on itself, you know, how much does it protrude beyond the back of the head and if so, by how much, etc. Um, if you're looking at it from photos, you need to really be sure that it's a, a profile view that can sometimes be misleading if it's not. So great yellow legs, well done to everybody. Um, let's go to quiz bird two now. All right, quiz bird two, we have even more people saying greater yellow legs. So um, this, yes, I see a high percentage here. I mean, this could be a contentious bird, but um, I, the, the observer identified it as less yellow legs. I, I did get some feedback from others and I would agree myself. I think it's on the longer build end of lesser yellow legs. And this is where I think um, it, it can be a bit of a pitfall. Let me see if I can close this. Um, you know, I, I would agree it's got quite a long bill. Um, I'm not sure the bird is in full profile view, so maybe let's not focus too much on the bill length, but, but do note the bill is, is fairly thin. It's not particularly deep based. It, it even has a slight down curve to it. Um, also note quite long wings extending beyond the tail. Um, it's a bird in alternate plumage, also photographed in May. It has a fairly clean white belly with little to no barring on the flanks, unlike that greater that we saw in the previous slide that was also photographed in May. Um, lesser can show you know, prominent flank barring, but wouldn't usually extend extensively across the belly. Um, the structure between the two yellow legs is often a good characteristic with, with lesser showing a smoother contour around the neck and chest compared to the bulkier greater. Um, now you could argue in this pose that it's actually, you know, not particularly smooth. Um, so this again is, I think, a feature that should be used with some caution. Um, however, it does have this very tapered rear as a result of its, its long wings projecting beyond the tail. Let's have a look at Quizbird 3 now. Okay, Quizbird 3. Okay. Most people uh, said lesser yellow legs. Yeah. And again, I, I chose this bird deliberately um, as a difficult bird and to sort of highlight, you know, perhaps this bill length variability. So very interesting, um, what I would call a short build greater on the LA River in Glendale. Um, compared to quiz bird two, the one we just looked at, it's bill versus head length, very similar indeed. Um, however, you know, pro greater features is um, had a green base to the bill, nostril stands out, slightly upturned bill, um, quite a coarsely streaked neck. Uh, it was also in company of greater yellow legs, so I was able to confirm that it was it was a similar sized bird. It was it was definitely not a, a lesser. Um, Having said that, it was actually a slightly smaller bird. Um, I, I think this is a bit of an abnormal bird. You note its damaged leg here, which caused it to, to limp around constantly as it fed. Um, and I think probably accounted uh, you know, for its smaller body size. It arrived in the fall as an adult and it wintered. And because it had this obvious injury, it, it made it a lot easier to track in the flock. Um, and see how its plumage evolved from uh, alternate to, to basic plumage. Uh, this photo is taken in November and you can sort of see it's well into, into basic plumage with these gray um, and lightly spotted, you know, back and scapular feathers. Um, but you can see, you know, there's a, there's sort of a, a black and gray alternate adult tertial there that still hasn't been molted. Um, and, then, and there's sort of maybe one or two other, you know, adult alternate like cover feathers there. Quiz bird four. Okay, here overwhelmingly people said Good. will it by 70%. Good. So this was, um, this was just a bit of a, I was trying to do a bit of a mind trick. Um, I thought by now you were used to the quiz birds being yellow legs and this bird is next to, you know, a, a yellow leg. So the knee jerk reaction might be to say this is a, this is a greater. 
um, you know, plumage wise, not too dissimilar to, to a, a great yellow legs, you know, grayish streak, bulky shorebird with a, with a barred belly. And if you, if you only had like one second to look at this picture, you, you'd totally be forgiven for thinking, well, maybe it's a greater next to a lesser. Um, uh, it has a fairly sturdy, you know, pale base bill. Have a look at those dull legs, you know, and there are a few other features that are just not right for greater yellow legs. Um, but yeah, well done for not falling for that trick. Quiz bird okay, five. five. So five, here's five and 56% have a uh, solitary sandpiper and the second is wandering tattler that comes in at 28. So um, a lesser yellow leg and a very tricky bird. It's hiding its legs here. Um, and and I do I do agree with everybody who picked solitary sandpiper that it has a certain solitary sandpiper feel to it. Um, uh, it it's got this sort of odd pale green based bill, um, you know, which solitary and greater yellow legs can turn it can can both show. But you know, I think this bill is actually maybe a bit of a result of mud, and we'll we'll have a look at the same bird in another photo. Um, we can't see how long the legs are. Um, but we can see some yellow toes just poking out from its resting leg. Um, and the upper parts seem, you know, a little too heavily spotted for solitary sandpiper with these broad pale notches all across the upper parts. Um, juvenile yellow legs, uh, you know, which we'll see in the fall here in, 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 in the next few weeks, you know, are brownish above. So, you know, this is a fall juvenile. Um, and the other, the other feature, which I think would sort of help separate it from solitary is it, you know, it lacks this bold eye ring of a solitary. Um, and the breast is a bit too heavily streaked for a solitary as well. Here's another view of that same bird on the right, you know, with its muddy bill and legs, you know, as that mud dries green, it makes the legs and bill um, a bit of a greenish color. Um, and here's another juvenile lesser also photographed these beautiful shots from Evan. He, he kindly let me use these and, and, and I've used a couple of others in this presentation. Um, and I'm including this bird on the left. It's not the same bird, but um, it does actually also show quite a pale base bill, which, you know, may not always be due to mud. Um, and, you know, that is a feature that's often, you know, cited as, as a pro greater yellow legs feature. Clearly some lessers can, can show this too. Um, juveniles of both yellow legs are, are brownish above with nice crisp pale notches to the upper part feathers um, and both species have light streaking across the neck and breast compared to more solid patches of color on solitary. Um, lesser is generally less sort of coarsely streaked um, around the neck than, than great yellow legs. And let's have a look at bird six. Okay, bird six. Most people said lesser yellow legs, but it was kind of even. Some people said yellow legs spa, which is okay, always right. Yeah. Um, so a greater yellow legs on the LA River in Glendale. We have a wintering flock of about 30 birds and uh, I don't have many other shore birds to look at. So I tend to spend a lot of time looking at the greater yellow legs and you will occasionally see you know, short billed birds um, and smaller bodied birds. Um, this bird looks clearly smaller than the greater yellow legs um, in front and behind it. Um, so absolutely understandable why, why you might go for greater. Um, I do think there is a bit of an illusion going on here. The bird in front and behind are resting and, and puffed up, making themselves look larger um, compared to our subject bird that is feeding and more actively moving. Um, but if we, if we look closer at our subject bird, we can see it's not actually that short build. Um, it, it's probably got a, a bill length that's you know, one and a quarter or one and a third times the width of the head. Um, and then looks also to me, you know, quite bulky around the neck and chest and it's quite coarsely streaked. You know, again, apologies for my photography, but it is, if you look closely, quite coarsely streaked, uh, you know, on the breast and, and, and even on the flanks and seems to extend, you know, a, a little area into the belly. So thank you for playing. Hopefully that was helpful, maybe even contentious. I don't know. I might get some emails after this. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so the Tringas span North America and Eurasia. Our familiar North American LA County birds are in bold and, and the rest of them are Eurasian. 
They are mainly freshwater birds, often with brightly colored legs, which is reflected in the English names of six species. For instance, you've got yellow legs, red shanks, green shanks. Um, they're typically associated with Northern hemisphere temperate regions for breeding. Some of this group, notably the solitary wood green sandpipers, even nest in trees using the old nests of other birds. I added two pictures at the bottom here of uh, spotted sandpiper and Wilson's fallow oak. These are not tringers. Um, but they are common LA County confusion species because they are similar sized, pale gray, brown above and white below and have yellow or yellowish legs. You might also notice that Willet is squeezed in there between the yellow legs. Um, the 47th AOU uh, checklist supplement added Willet, Willet and Tatlers to this group. Um, and interesting, I think it's fascinating, and, and I know has also been contentious, um, genetic data shows that the willet is more closely related to lesser yellow legs than, than either species is related to greater yellow legs. Um, willet is, is the largest of this group, and so in effect is a huge shank. Here's a willet here on the left, photographed by John Feenstra. In terms of alternate uh, plumage for willets, you know, they're not too dissimilar to a great yellow legs, um, you know, heavily barred, black and gray checkered upper parts. Um, but note those grayish legs. Um, and in flight, they have this striking black and white wing and tail pattern, you know, which would easily separate it from any of the yellow legs or shanks. We have a basic plumage bird on the right, uh, uh, you know, it's a, a familiar bird along our beaches and rocky shorelines, um, but they can turn up uncommonly on migration inland in our county where they, they can cause some confusion um, as, you know, Willet is not a bird you'd be expecting to see. Uh, the Willet is composed of two morphologically and vocally distinct subspecies with broadly separated breeding distributions in North America. Um, Nominate semipalmata um, breeds in coastal salt brackish marshes along the Atlantic and Gulf coasts of eastern North America and the West Indies. Um, and the western willet breeds in wet grasslands prairies in the northwest interior of North America. And you know this is the willet you know that we saw, see commonly on the coast here in LA County. Um, in general, eastern is smaller, darker. Um, but I think if you're interested, um, I would definitely recommend a trip over to Zeno Canto to compare the, the voices of the two. Um, these two populations have long been, you know, mooted as a, as a split into two species. And, you know, there's been fairly recent research papers proposing um, as such. So, you know, perhaps that's something to keep an eye out in the future that, that we add another species to the, the Tringa, Tringa group. Here we have a couple of basic plumage tattlers. Wandering on the left is our familiar rocky shorebird tattler in the county, photographed by Aaron Skelton. Um, breakwaters around, you know, Marina del Rey, Playa del Rey can be a reliable place to find them in the winter. Um, and in flight, the uniformly gray upper parts, dark winds are unique to tattlers. Gray-tailed tattler on the right there, a photo by Paul Kelly is is the only one of these Eurasian tringers that does actually have an LA County record. Um, generally on migration, its habitat is mudflats, estuary compared to the rocky shoreline habitat of wandering, exceedingly difficult to separate on plumage, uh, generally paler than wandering with these whiter flanks, um, a bolder supercilium, darker laws, a shorter primary projection, which you cannot see in these photos. Um, and if you get exceptionally good views, the, the nasal groove is shorter uh, than in wandering. Um, but lastly, perhaps most reliably, they can be separated on voice. And, and again, I'd recommend a trip over to Zeno Canto to compare the two if you're, if you're interested. There've been a number of California records of wood sandpiper, spotted red shank, marsh sandpiper, green shank, common green shank. Here we have a vagrant spotted red shank in Michigan, which is similar in size to greater yellow legs there on the right. Very similar in structure, but look at those bright red legs and that bill base. In alternate plumage, they, they really are also you know, stunning birds. You know, they have this all black plumage with these small white spots. Um, and unlike yellow legs, the shanks have this sort of white dowitcher like V up the back in flight. Um, as mentioned earlier, research shows that lesser and greater yellow legs are not actually sister taxa, but interestingly, recent 
DNA analysis suggests that spotted red shank is most closely related to, to greater yellow legs. Um, so taxonomically, greater yellow legs sits between its Eurasian cousins, spotted red shank and common green shank. Here we have a couple of photos from John Feaster. We have uh, a marsh sandpiper um, uh, on the left here, very similar in plumage to green shank and not totally dissimilar to a, uh, a basic plumage yellow legs. Um, it, it's smaller and daintier than a green shank, approaching sort of less yellow legs maybe in structure compared to a green shank. Um, green shank is similar in size to greater yellow legs, just for comparison. Marsh sandpiper has this finer needle-like bill, generally whiter plumage, greenish legs, as you can see here, it doesn't have bright yellow legs, and a white V up the back. Um, it's kind of like a dowager. Wood sandpiper on the right is quite a regular migrant to the outer edges of the ABA area, the Aleutians mainly, sometimes in sizable numbers in spring and has even nested. Um, it has more greenish yellow legs and coupled with white upper tail coverts, uh, no V up the back on this one. Not too dissimilar to a less yellow legs in plumage. Um, it's smaller in size though, like a, like a solitary sandpiper um, and shorter legged than a yellow legs with a more prominent supercilium over the eye. The other Eurasian species like green sandpiper and common red shank have occurred very rarely in the ABA area and uh, no confirmed California records. Green sandpiper has occurred in the Aleutians and common red shank uh, in Newfoundland, presumably the red shanks of vagrant birds from Europe that have made a transatlantic crossing. Um, on the bottom left here on this photo by John Feenster, we have a common red shank. You can just about see the red legs, but note that white trailing edge to the wings that actually separates it from spotted red shank. And you can sort of see the white V up the back um, there, something you, you won't see on obviously on a yellow legs. Um, and we can't see it on the green shank above it, but they also have a white V up the back. Um, and on that green shank that's above that red shank, um, you can see sort of dull greenish legs. And as mentioned, you know, that's, that's the, the Eurasian sister to greater yellow legs. And, uh, you, you know, do, does look quite similar in, in structure and even plumage. The green sandpiper on the right is the Eurasian counterpart of solitary sandpiper, both in size, structure and plumage even. Um, however, notice one crucial difference, the white upper tail coverts, this white rump area here, and central tail feathers, which are dark on solitary sandpiper. So let's have a, a, a closer look at the regular similar plumage trio we get here in Ellie County, greater and lesser yellow legs and um, solitary sandpiper. So greater and lesser, very similar looking species as we've, as we've just encountered um, in our quiz. Um, they breed in the extensive tiger forests of Canada and US and they spend winters primarily at subtropical and tropical latitudes. Um, greater yellow legs being larger, presumably hardier, winters a little further north and in larger numbers in the temperate zone than does lesser yellow legs. Um, as you can see from this map here, it winters through most of California. Solitary sandpiper on the right there, generally winters even further south away from LA County. And all, all of this is often reflected in, in the sort of status for LA County. Um, as you can see from these graphs, if we look at the one on the left-hand side, greater yellow legs in blue on the left is the default yellow legs. It's the, it's the common and expected yellow legs by a fairly considerable margin. Um, and as you can see, greater winters in reasonable numbers compared to lesser, which is, you know, very uncommon in the winter in comparison. Um, and like most shorebirds in the county, you know, numbers peak in the fall with adult graters arriving first, you know, some as early as late June, um, followed by the browner backed juveniles in mid August. And then over to the right here, um, probably maybe too many lines, a little confusing, but um, we have, um, I, I thought I'd just add spotted sandpiper in there just because it can be sometimes a confusion bird. Um, you know, it's obviously the most ab abundant out of the out of the group here. Again, just remind everybody spotted sandpiper is not a tringer, it's just a potential confusion species. Um, followed by greater yellow legs. And then coming in in third and fourth, and certainly a very distant fourth is, is less yellow legs. And then in red there is solitary sandpiper. Um, you know, both less yellow legs, solitary sandpiper are really quite uncommon in comparison. Um, and solitary sandpiper would be considered very rare in winter. Um, 
And of course, like most shorebirds, again, uh, you know, the four weeks of late July through September when numbers swell with migrating juveniles, you know, the peak periods are when you could be lucky enough to find a, a solitary or a lesser. There is a, a bit of a spring peak, as you'll notice, but mostly our, our chances are higher in the fall. So both yellow legs tend to feed by picking at the surface. They're not necessarily probing birds. Um, and both species have bright yellow legs, of course. Greater is described as rangy. Greater's bill is sturdy with a deep base, often upturned and often distinctly longer than the head. Um, often has a pale greenish base to the upper and lower mandible. So you can sort of see the nostril sometimes stands out a bit more. And it has this bulkier neck chest. Alternate adults of both yellow legs are on the left here. Um, they both have barring on the underparts and flanks, which can be used to help separate greater from lesser. Greater's barring often extends to the belly. Um, however, alternate adult graters can have unmarked bellies. Um, so this is not an unequivocal feature. You know, many of the adults, uh, you know, you can see right now on the Glendale stretch of the river where I, I, I bird, you know, have variably barred bellies. Um, and alternate adults have black and white spotting on the upper part feathers. Um, and often, you know, quite a bold and more distinct eye ring than lesser and, and generally less of a capped appearance. Um, and a more, I've mentioned this before, a more coarsely streaked, uh, you know, head and neck. Juveniles are to the right of both species. Uh, you know, they're brownish generally on the upper parts with pale and dark spots to the edges of the back, scapulars and, and tertials. Less yellow legs, on the other hand, compared to greater, in, in all plumages, has, has a fairly slim, straight build. It's delicate, slim chest, potentially a smoother neck contour. Um, like graters, juveniles are brownish with pale and dark spots to the edges of, of the, the back, scapulars, and, and tertials. Um, solitary sandpiper over on the right-hand corner here, just kind of squeezed it in. Um, it's most likely to be confused, you know, probably with a lesser yellow legs or a spotted sandpiper. Usually has darker green legs, um, but can appear quite bright yellowish, you know, in the bright sun. Um, and so it could be quite confusing. All plumages of solitary sandpiper have darker brown upper parts with, with smaller pale spotting um, and darkish, you know, less streaked breasts in general than, than the yellow legs. Um, Juveniles have sort of fairly neat spotting on the upper parts um, and buff tipped primaries. Um, there is a, a, a Western and an Eastern form and, um, you know, Western you know, is generally meant to show stronger buff tipping to the, to the upper part feathers. Um, but I, I, I don't know that I would get into trying to separate these, certainly not in this sort of webinar, you know, unless you're really confident you have it aged correctly and that it is actually a juvenile that you're looking at. Um, and not in fact an adult. Um, and even then, I, I, I don't actually know how much variability there is. Um, Eastern form apparently also does have broader white bars on the tail and apparently may winter a little further north than the Western form. Um, there were a couple of papers in the early 2000s that did assert based on DNA that you know, the two forms are in fact species. And then over on the top right here, just <coughs> a, a sort of fairly rough um, idea of sort of a size comparison between some of these species, in, including Wilson's fallow open spotted sandpiper. Sibley has a blog post, why are yellow legs hard to identify? And it, and it focuses on how variable the bill length can be, which is often the go-to feature when IDing a, a lone yellow legs. Um, a rule that birders tend to follow, as I've mentioned before, is that if the bill is one quarter to one and a half times the width of the head, then it's a greater, whereas lesser has a much shorter bill, um, usually not much longer than the width of the head. Um, it's a great rule. Um, but as can be seen, I think it can be fairly variable. And there are some areas of overlap with shorter billed graters um, that, that have a ratio less than that. And, and I, I would uh, you know, believe there's some longer billed lessers that are in that same range. Um, and there is also some degree of error in terms of how you measure that ratio as well, um, in terms of measuring it accurately, you know, on a profile with, with photos. Um, 
you know, here we have some of the more interesting bill shapes highlighting variability and the hazards of relying on bill length alone. Um, birds are labeled on, on the left and right. And, you know, as you can see, I think we have some overlapping birds here. Um, one thing that you can notice is that all the graters have a, a fairly pale greenish base to the upper mandible highlighting the, the nostril. Um, of course, as we saw in our quiz, there, there are exceptions to that rule as well. Um, and you could even say that the, the lesser on the bottom left here actually has, you know, a slight upturn to its bill as well. Um, you know, not too dissimilar to the greater to the right of it. Back to this slide again. Structurally, when you see the two species side by side, there are certain differences which, you know, I, I try to illustrate in these sketches. Um, you know, Bird has described Ray greater as having, you know, a longer neck a snakier S-shaped neck when feeding, more of a, you know, Adam's apple where the neck meets the chest, uh, you know, a heavier, deeper keel. I don't know if keel is a word or it's just a heavier undercarriage, certainly around the belly, um, you know, a little more bulk, maybe a bit more of a hunched back when feeding. Um, you know, these are, these are good, but potentially subtle features and, and really best appreciated when they're side by side. Um, if, if you find yourself also with uh, some time at hand, you might want to look at the yellow legs wind tips. You know, those wind tips, you know, might hold clues, but are variable and subtle enough to be unreliable. Um, relative to overall size, less yellow legs has longer wings than greater, as can be expected by the species longer average migration distance. And this longer wing is, is often expressed visually by the wingtips extending noticeably beyond the tail tip. Uh, while the wingtips are greater if they do extend beyond the tail, you know, typically do so, you know, only marginally. However, you know, there is individual variation in, in both and, and molt will complicate matters as well. Um, there's certainly plenty of examples of greater you can find with primaries projecting, uh, you know, beyond the tail to varying degrees. Um, and also be aware of, you know, molting adult graters in the fall. I've illustrated one here, you know, that will show a lot of primary um, and may fool you into thinking that they are quite long winged. There is one interesting good feature, but unfortunately very hard to see in the field. And that is the spotting barring on the inner primaries and secondaries of greater, which can be seen in flight if you get an excellent view or, or, or photo and, uh, and are looking for it. Um, if we look at the greater on the right and compare that to of a photo here from Miguel and compare that to Kevin's photo on the left of the, the rather plain unspotted inner primaries and secondaries. Now, when it comes to call, I think um, in general, people have felt very good about identifying them. Um, however, in recent years, there's been actually a lot more debate online about actually how easy they are to separate. Um, a conventional rule of thumb for separating the two species on flight calls has to been to count the number of calls. So greater has three or more notes and lesser generally has one to three notes. Um, you know, this is mentioned in literature um, while also mentioning the difference in pitch. Um, but, you know, in recent years, as more people have been recording, there's been more of an emphasis on the larger repertoire of yellow legs calls, you know, particularly lesser. Um, and it maybe isn't quite as clear cut as once thought. Um, there's been various spirited debates that have sprung up about the identity of various online recordings. Um, you know, the big caveat has to be that the two species are very visually similar. So it's quite possible mistakes have been made in the identification of the recordings. Um, perhaps we're making it harder than it needs to be, but it does appear some possibility that both species can produce quite similar flight calls. Um, we'll, we'll play these, but just before we do, let's just take a quick look at the spectrogram. Here are the classic flight calls. We've got greater on the left here, doing a three note and then a four note call. Um, and this very classic lesser is just doing a single call. Um, but take a look at the, the shape and the pitch on the spectrogram. Greater, slightly lower pitched, flatter, um, Pete Plow describes, Nathan Pete Plow describes this sort of upward voice break, which I think he's referring to these, uh, these positions here on the note that you can see in greater yellow legs that you don't see in lesser. Um, whereas lesser here gives a pretty simple down slurred whistle at a higher pitch. So I'm going to play these back to back. We'll hear greater yellow legs and then we'll hear lesser.
So seem to be fairly easy to separate on those classic calls. But there does appear to be some variability. So here's an example of a three note lesser. Um, it, it seems that the number of notes a bird gives seems to depend on its agitation level. Um, but again, you know, listen to the pitch, look at the spectrogram. Greater is flatter. Greater is here on the left with that upward voice break. Uh, compared to the steeper descending, higher pitched chevron shaped lesser call. First recording is greater then followed by the, the three note lesser. Hopefully I'll play it. So quite similar, but they, you probably may be able to detect that pitch difference. Um, and again, there is a slight difference in the shape um, to the spectrogram. Lastly, here's another one that uh, has been discussed online, but was visually confirmed as a lesser by Andrew Spencer, Spencer and Nathan Peeplo. Um, often given three notes, but gives more than three uh, notes, as you can actually see on this spectrograph, there's like a five and a four note. Um, but again, do note the shape, the chevron shaped compared to the slightly flatter grater, which often has that upward voice break. Um, all these things, you know, may be beyond the human ear, but, you know, do show up on, on spectrogram. So let's take a listen to this interesting bird. So greater yellow legs in basic plumage that we see in the winter in the county is this rather gray bird with some white spotting on the upper parts, which aside from its long bright yellow legs is not anything exceptional to look at. Note the long bill on this bird, far too long for a lesser. Um, adults sometimes begin this molt into, into basic plumage immediately after breeding and, and complete it on the wintering grounds. Here's another bird in non-breeding basic plumage, again that thick. Upturned bill looks too big and long for a lesser, too thick. Note the coarsely streaked neck compared to some lessers in a similar plumage we'll see later. Note how the primaries fall in line with the tail, even though it's alone. It, it, it looks a bulky bird around the neck and, and, and the breast. We can see the bill is almost one and a half times the width of the head. This uh, was taken in April by Aaron, um, starting to acquire some alternate feathering on the head, back and flanks. And the head is a nice mix of gray and black feathering of alternate plumage. Birds in their first year of life will also acquire some adult-like alternate plumage in the spring too. Again, note that thick based bill, slightly upturned, greenish base makes that nostril stand out. Note the bold eye ring and the primaries also seem to sort of fall in line with the tail on this bird. Here's a spring adult in its fine alternate plumage on the left, lots of lovely black and white notching on the upper parts and black thick coarse streak neck. Hard to see the flanks in this view, but the breast streaks extend down to the belly. Note that long upturned bill. On the right, here's another bird in alternate plumage, but note those dull green legs. That's not actually a shadow, but is Paiute Pond's mud. Um, not a bird to be confused with a green shank. Here's some photos from Molly, Lily, Alex, which highlight the long-legged, long-billed nature of greater yellow legs. Some of them showing the chunkier neck and sort of deeper undercarriage. Not uncommon to see in the county in the fall of molting adults, you know, birds coming out of alternate plumage. This one doesn't have much in the way of, of tertials, which makes the primaries look quite long. Um, you can't really see where the tail ends, but it does look like there's a long primaries extending beyond the tail on this bird. But note the barring that seems to extend around to the belly and also quite a long build bird. Some more excellent photos by Evan. Both these are returning full birds in August. Here we have a juvenile with those brown upper parts and bold white spots and the lack of black barring on the flanks. Um, and a molting bird on the right with adult like alternate feathers. These are birds we see coming through first in the fall, followed by the juveniles a number of weeks later. On the bird on the right, note the semblance of, of barring, uh, you know, that extends down onto the upper belly, the blackish alternate feathers on the, on the scapulars. Um, note there is a bit of a small primary projection beyond the tail on this bird, again, just sort of highlighting that that's certainly not an uh, unequivocal feature. 
here's a basic plumage lesser in February. You know, lesser is also gray in, in basic plumage with, you know, fine whitish spots on the back. But note that short bill, no longer than the width of the head. Um, and also note how the neck is, is not too coarsely streaked. This is the same local bird last winter that roamed the river between Betty Davis and Atwater, a rare overwinter in the county and a unique opportunity to watch this bird molt and start to acquire some alternate plumage before it left. Um, you can see the progression here from February to March. Here's a, an alternate lesser yellow legs, very similar in plumage to alternate greater. You know, this one is quite extensive flag barring. Um, you know, many birds, as you can see, the little inset in the top left there from Jeffrey Timmer, you know, has quite a, quite a lot less. Um, but note that short bill, um, very thin, um, also fairly sort of dark, not particularly thick based. Um, note the barring on the flanks, not particularly thick and extensive, doesn't extend to the belly. It's, it's dark, but fairly thin neck streaking. Uh, also seems to show some fairly long primaries extend um, beyond the tail. I would say the bird in the top left is maybe a more typical looking alternate bird. Here's a juvenile lesser in the fall, again, like greater, it has brown upper parts with broad white notches. If they could always be this easy and we could see them side by side, that would be great. Here's a nice comparison of the two species in fall where we can look at shape. Look at the bulk to the neck, the bulkier back, look at the slightly more attenuated tapered rear, which is due to the sort of longer primaries of less yellow legs. Maybe a little bit subtle, but the neck is more coarsely streaked here on greater. Here's another shot again, sort of showing the structural difference. You know, as we saw on that opening slide, there, there's a big size difference between the two. And, you know, we can see it here too. And in this context, they're easy. Um, I've mentioned structure quite a bit, but that's something that's really best appreciated when they are side by side, like they are here. Um, if these birds were so low, so that we're unsure of size, not sure there's anything particularly strikingly different between them in terms of body shape here. You know, maybe the heavier undercarriage of greater. And the same here, if we were to silhouette these two and enlarge the lesser to the size of greater, maybe not a whole lot of difference in shape. In fact, let's try it. Here's a full greater and lesser, again, beautifully photographed by Evan. Uh, juvenile birds with those pale spots and notches on the brown back. Um, you know, as I've mentioned, my shore bird views are never this good. You know, they are distant. And if you've ever birded the 134 freeway hotspot in the morning, everything is well silhouetted. Um, I think many of us shore bird viewing is often under less than ideal conditions. Birds are distant heat haze. So why don't we try silhouetting these two birds and pretending they're actually alone so we have no idea how big they are. Um, and let's see if we can see much difference in the, in the shape um, with them. Well, um, you know, the relatively shorter bill of the lesser is evident, but I'm not sure I see anything else that's strikingly different here. You know, in fact, you could argue that the lesser has more of a hunchback um, and the same amount of bulk around the neck. Um, greater does seem to show that sort of deeper breast keel compared to lesser. And, you know, maybe we can say lesser has more of a tapered shape to its rear um, due to those long primaries, but this is all very subtle stuff. Um, of course, this is a moment frozen in time. It's not a true picture of a shape when you watch a living, moving bird, but it, it does highlight the variability of our perception of structure when we, when we talk about the yellow legs. Another view, which maybe does show that fuller, deeper belly of the greater behind. Another one just showing. Here's, here's, a, here's a lesser with a dowager. You can see it's quite a small bird. Uh, we may not be able to see the two yellow legs together, but other shorebirds can help. You know, if it's similar in size or clearly smaller than dowager's stilts or killdeer, that can help us. Um, you know, here we can see it's clearly smaller than the dowager. Um, body size is a, certainly a very good fe feature. We've talked about potential overlap in bill length, plumage, shape, and calls, but I'm unaware of any overlap in size between the two species. Um, and when thinking about size, we have to ignore the long legs. Longer legged birds can appear bigger because they stand taller. So we want to focus on, on the size of the body when comparing it with another species. Here's the two species again, showing sort of a shorter build. Do we have time to do three more quiz birds, Mark? Sure, we can do three more quiz birds. Are we running late? No, we maybe we'll, oh, we'll, we're fine. We'll whiz through the, the last. Let's do let's do quiz number seven. 
So these are my photography specials, deliberately somewhat silhouetted, just to see if we're getting a sense for shape and structure at all. Same answers as before. And votes are coming in. Still down to 42%. Come on, guys. <laughs> Get brave. I don't think anybody <laughs> can blame them. Yeah. Half everybody's like, oh. Okay. Okay. More votes are coming in. Come on. Here they come. All right. Let's. 10 seconds left. So those of you who are undecided, I'll close this out in a few seconds. All right, ending that one. Do we want to show that one or do we want to do another uh, quiz? We can do this one and one more and then okay. we'll show let's them. Do, let's do quiz number eight. Okay, here we go. Quiz number eight. Okay. Okay, we're up to sixty percent by now. Good. Let me give it about ten more seconds again. Will people take a picture and shove it into Merlin? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I did. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that before the last quiz. Okay, let's end this one. Okay, and last quiz of the night, I promise. I'm not gonna to torture anybody anymore. Okay, and here is quiz number nine. We're up to... Oh, there we go. Now we're starting to get more people coming in here. Uh, more people are voting on this one than the last one already. Good. Well, I Th think that's because they, they put it, they, they went to Merlin. Yeah, well, it's a reflection of my photography. Finally, finally, <laughs> finally a reasonable photo. <laughs> okay, let's do 10 more seconds. The ridiculously silhouetted ones. Okay, we have an 82% uh, uh, return on this one. Okay, so that was quiz nine. All right, let's put up the results for quiz seven, quiz bird seven. Okay, here is quiz seven. And, uh, okay, great. And yes, 60% said lesser yellow legs. And I don't think it was easy. I actually also, not only was it poor to begin with, but I also made it a little darker in Photoshop just to make it a little harder. Um, but I, I actually sort of feel like it's got a reasonable size bill on it, but I, you know, the, the, the measurements maybe say otherwise. It's not a particularly long billed burr, maybe quite a typical looking lesser yellow legs. And there's another shot of it just to show um, it, you know, it, it, it's got a fairly slender structure. We can see it more in this photo on the right, which you, you didn't have when you did the quiz. Um, quite long wings, sort of tapered rear, fairly short build. And, and you know, you, you can see it's got long legs. Even though you can't see all its legs, you can see the upper part of the legs above the knee joint is quite long here, which would imply it's a long-legged bird. Let's do the answer for quiz bird eight. Okay, let's do quiz bird eight. Hold on, here we go. Quiz bird eight. So this uh, one, most people, 66% said lesser yellow legs. Yeah, and I think I would certainly understand why. Again, you know, as you can see, I made an already terrible photo worse by, by putting it in some silhouette and you really can't see anything much in terms of plumage. And, and, and I kind of chose this one specifically because I felt structurally it, it kind of highlighted, you know, what can be quite a, a delicate long-legged bird, solitary sandpiper, um, you know, quite yellow legs-like, I, I feel. 
um, sometimes um, compared to say a spotted sandpiper, which you know is often thought as a, as a common confusion species. Um, and, and at a distance, you know, could appear like a lesser yellow legs. Note, however, you know, in the in the better version of the photo, the green legs, darker back, and and quite a prominent eye ring, you know, which you did not have access to in the in the quiz bird. And then let's take a quick look at number nine. And number nine was most people said lesser yellow legs, kind of, and then twenty eight and twenty five percent on greater and solitary. So again, I felt like this was a good bird to choose, got quite yellowy green legs. You can see though from this bird, even though maybe you can't see all of its legs standing, just look at the length of the leg between the knee joint um, and, and the body. That's quite short, which would imply it's a shorter legged bird than for instance, this bird, which has quite a lot of leg there. Um, so this is a shorter legged bird, um, has quite, bright yellowy legs in the sunshine sometimes. Um, and, um, you know, the other thing I think to look out for here is you know, not as broadly notched as uh, a lesser yellow legs above. And let's actually compare this bird to that quiz bird we had earlier, um, which I think, you know, very understandably, you can look at these birds and think they're incredibly similar. Um, so, you know, from the first quiz, we, we, we had this odd lesser yellow legs with this sort of muddy green base bill. Um, so if both these birds are wading in deep water, it can be quite hard to see the leg length and, and color. Um, lesser is a bigger bird, um, but if you need to focus on plumage, note, note the darker brown plumage of solitary, the smaller, less extensive spotting to the upper parts, um, and that bold eye ring and the less streaked upper breast and neck of solitary. Um, lesser shows maybe more of a pale supercilium that extends behind the eye um, compared to solitary that that usually has a supercilium that sort of ends at the eye. Here's a photo from John Feenstra, which is a nice photo of, uh, of solitary sandpipers. Um, generally quite a delicate, elegant bird, but smaller, more compact than lesser yellow legs. Um, more of a delicate feeder compared to the lower to the ground and characteristic constant tail bot bobbing of a, of, a, of a confusion species spotted sandpiper. All plumages show this sort of dark brownish upper parts with, with finer, smaller white spots and darkish breasts and, and usually so a nice bold, bold eye ring. Um, they often show as well a dark bend to the wing, which can give the wing a more contrasting appearance compared to say spotted. Uh, the bold eye ring is a big clue. This is actually a, a photo of a very rare wintering bird from LA County at the South Coast Botanic Garden a couple of winters ago. Is a, a juvenile, really bold eye ring. It's very distinctive, green legs, light spotting on the upper parts, all key features. Note the less streaked than lesser upper breast and neck. It's sort of more solid um, and, and no supercilium really that extends behind the eye. Note the rather buff tip spots on the upper parts of this juvenile, juvenile but you know, rather bright, again, greenish legs that can invite confusion with lesser yellow legs. Much shorter legged though, um, uh, than lesser. Note also those long primaries, which will help separate it from spotted sandpiper, which has much shorter wings. And this bird also seems to show this sort of dark bend to the wing as well. Note the dark central upper tail cover, central tail feathers, which separates it from lesser yellow legs, uh, which are, are, have white uh, here. Um, and also any of the, the Eurasian, um, you know, confusion tringa species as well can be separated based on this. When alighting, you know, after it, after it flies, it often will hold its wings straight up and then slowly close them, which you know, has been captured really well here by, by Calvin. Again, the bird on the left, notice that really bold eye ring. Um, spotting on the upper parts, long primary projection separate it from spotted. Here we have an adult in alternate plumage in the spring. Note this brown or juvenile on the right, um, the spotting here is whiter. This is actually the, the eastern form um, and, and whiter compared to those buffier spotted birds in the previous slide that were the western juveniles. Not a tringer, but can be confused with solitary. Short winged, you can see how the wings end before the tail. 
uh, no spotting on the upper parts, uniform upper parts, but note the, the yellow legs and, and, you know, which can be confusing, bold eye ring. Um, at a distance, spotted is lower to the ground than a solitary and will usually give itself away with a, with a tail bob or two. If I didn't say this is a spotted sandpiper. Here's another spotted sandpiper just showing off its yellow legs. Here's a comparison between a spotted and a solitary. Note the pale, uh, you know, buff spotting on, on this bird here. Long primaries compared to the spotted sandpiper, which has its unspotted back and also the, the longer legs of, of solitary. Solitary and, and spotted have very similar calls, um, um, but solitary is higher pitched, um, a little bit shorter, more piercing. I'll play them both here. I think you'll, you'll hear the, the difference. We'll play solitary first and then we'll roll straight into spotted. So very similar sounding, and you can even see the shape is very similar, but there is a pitch difference, um, which you know, is, is certainly noticeable in the spectrogram if, if you feel like you can't actually hear it in the field. Um, some other confusion species that I've mentioned earlier, not in this family, um, that can be confused with less yellow legs, especially as Wilson's phalarope, gray, fine, straight bill and bright yellow legs. When we see Wilson's phalaropes, or really any of these phalaropes, uh, wading around and not swimming, it, it can be quite confusing. Um, you know, I had a distant silhouetted one of these Wilsons walking around feeding earlier this fall and judging by its delicate feeding style, small size, you know, I, I definitely had to get closer to be sure I wasn't looking at the less yellow legs. But look at those bright yellow legs. Lastly, there's two more yellow legged, but much rarer uh, shorebirds in LA County. Again, these aren't in the, in the Tringa family, but they're confusion species. And this is stilt sandpiper and pectoral, pectoral sandpiper photographed here beautifully by Mark Scheel. Um, the juvenile stilt sanded on the left. It has these, these yellow legs, these long yellow legs um, with grayish upper parts, but it has this long, somewhat down curved bill. Um, it has more of a capped appearance compared to say less yellow legs. Certainly that bill is, is quite distinctive. Um, pectoral sandpiper it has sort of greenish yellow legs, but you know, it's browner. It's pretty distinctive with that sharply defined pectoral breast band. So I hope if you were feeling overwhelmed by the idea of separating the yellow legs and solitary sandpiper from Willet, Spotted Sands and Wilson Phalaropes, that, you know, maybe you found a few pointers here to go away and research. Um, perhaps if you were overly confident, confident in your yellow legs ID, maybe there have been a few notes of caution to be aware of. Um, I wanted to end with the only tringer that we haven't mentioned tonight, and it's, it's the rarest of the group and, and one of the rarest shorebirds in the world, um, and that's Nordman's greenshank, which is endemic to the East Asian Australasian flyway. Nordman's is that larger, whitish headed bird just right of center looking over its shoulder here in a, a photo of mixed group of Eurasian shorebirds. We've got some great knots and a Terex sandpiper next to it. Um, and I think probably some Bartel Godwits in the background there. Um, I wasn't gonna mention it at all as it's, it's not a bird that most birders will ever encounter in their lifetime. It's highly endangered with less than 2000 individuals left and it's, its numbers are declining. But I, I thought, you know, maybe it is worth mentioning simply because, you know, it's an indicator of where our LA County tringers are, are likely headed. Um, with the Arctic breeding areas warming up and continued loss of habitat along its migration routes in Southeast Asia, Nordman's greedshank is likely to tip further towards extinction in the next few years. Um, along with other shorebird species, the, you know, the, the Southeast Asia migratory corridor hosts the highest proportion of threatened and endangered shorebirds in the world. Um, but we have the, the same pressures on this side of the Pacific. Um, lesser, yellow leg, lesser yellow legs has declined globally by more than 70% in the past 50 years. Um, and research over the past 15 years indicates it's declining at a rate of almost 9% per year. Um, it may well slide into mythical status as a county bird within our lifetimes, um, which is why we all need to at least try, even if it's only in a small way on a global scale to speak up and educate about protecting local wetland and shorebird migration habitat. We have very little of that in LA County. 
Um, but for instance, we should resist plans to develop the LA River in areas that are currently rich for migrant shorebirds. And you know, we should try to do our part to educate city planners about the birds using these habitats so that we're not having the same conversation that uh, in, in 10 years time, uh, you know, that reflects what's going on in, in Southeast Asia. And that is the end of the show. Thank All you. right. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you. Um, let's see. If you have any questions, we can um, just put them on the Q&A. Um, let's see. Or in the chat, I see uh, I see some thank yous in the, in the chat. Thank you for listening, whoever came. Or thank you for watching on YouTube if you're watching this later. <laughs> All, all errors are my own, so please direct them my way. <laughs> Although I'm not giving out my email address. Yeah. So, Andy, <laughs> I have a question for you. What about the timing of migration? It seemed like from your graphs, all these birds kind of migrate, especially in the fall, about the same time in their peak migration. Is that is that true? It's a good question. Yes, I mean, I think, I mean, Personally, I noticed, let's just pull up what the graph show. Personally, I noticed yellow, certainly on the lesser yellow leg side of things, um, you know, greater is the abundant bird. I, I see that well before I see any lessers. Um, and and on, on this chart here, yeah, it, it is also reflected that, you know, lessers come through later. And I'm assuming that's because they're just made up, the bulk of these birds are made up of juveniles. Um, on, on the lesser yellow leg side of things, whereas greater yellow legs, as you know, we obviously get, you know, a lot of adults coming through and they always migrate sooner. Um, so I suppose it's possible you could be getting an adult lesser yellow legs coming through, you know, earlier, but I, I feel like nearly all the fall lessers, I mean, I, I feel like there was, was there maybe a, a lesser recently in Eber, maybe Richard Bath, I can't remember if it was a, a bird that wasn't migrating or it was a bird that was very early returner in June. So, um, but generally I think most of the lessers through the county are juveniles. And so, yeah, they are coming through later than you would see greaters because you're, you're seeing the adults first. Okay, we have a question from Lily. Uh, Lily asks, was the, were the greater and lesser yellow eggs once considered a single species? Um, I don't, I mean, I, I, if we're going back in, in history, 200 years, I, I don't think so. I mean, I certainly feel like in the, certainly in modern history, no. I, I, I don't know when it comes to how people were interpreting them 200 years ago. Um, you know, as, as you can see, they look incredibly similar in terms of plumage, but it turns out based on DNA, they're not, closely that closely related at all um, and there are other birds like willet that are closer closer relatives I, I i don't know in in the very very early historical context i don't know if there's anybody on this uh on this webinar who may know on on the history side of things whether 200 years ago or 300 years ago they were considered a single species but not that i'm aware of okay thank you Sorry, Lily, I can I can answer. That's a that's a good one. Um, so uh, Diego asks, uh, which species are solitary sandpipers most closely related to? Well, they're in that they're in that group with their Eurasian friends. Um, uh, you know, green you know green sandpiper is it's probably its nearest relative. I think solitary and green are the the nearest relatives of each other and. You know, it's, it's, it's odd, they're two different continents away, but yes, the, the green sandpiper and solitary are the, are the cousins. And they're very, they're very, very similar, except for those, the, the dark central uh, upper tail feathers of, of solitary. Okay, thank you. Um, an, an anonymous attendee asks, why might the two yellow legs look so similar? What did I read on? I felt like I read that there was maybe some mimicry going on, that they, they, there was some sort of convergent mim mimicry going on between the two. I, I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's interesting, and I would like to know more. Um, 
that there potentially must be some evolutionary benefit for one of the species or both of the species, I guess, maybe in, in, in terms of evading predators on the breeding ground or, or, or something like that. I don't know. As, as you can see, they both have similar, not too dissimilar calls as well, or they can utter similar calls. So. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any more questions? I'm not seeing any in the uh, Q&A, so, oh, all of a sudden I'm seeing more questions. Um, John Harris, oh, I guess it's a comment that it sounds much like the downy, hairy woodpecker situation. Yeah, I think there's many, there's many of these sort of species pairs that require a holistic approach. A, a, you have to look at the whole bird um, and not just one feature. Um, and there's many of these sorts of difficult to separate species pairs. Um, and and uh, yeah, I would say it's, it's similar to something like that. Oh, here we go. Do the two yellow legs ever hybridize despite not being each other's closest relatives? I, I, I tried to do research on that because I was curious myself. As, as we know, there's, there's often some crazy hybrid pairings that turn up. You know, we've had it's called Cox's Sandpiper in San Diego. There was that surf knot, you know, great knot surf bird. So, uh, and, you know, pectoral sandpiper. You know, I saw some photos, I think, on the Facebook group of a, of a bird that people thought might be like a lesser yellow legs pectoral sandpiper hybrid. It was a crazy looking bird. Um, I could not find any photos or descriptions of a hybrid between the two, but one would imagine it must have occurred. But I think in answer to your, to your question, it's certainly if it does occur, it's incredibly rare, I think. And unless they are hybridizing like crazy and we're not identifying them correctly, <laughs> you know, I suppose there's always that possibility. You know, both the yellow legs are quite poorly, uh, poorly known. A lot of, you know, there's not been a tremendous amount of research on sort of breeding ecology and that sort of stuff. Um, a, a lot of the information that is inferred about them is based on, uh, you know, research that's actually been done on on green green shank for for grady yellow legs. So there, there probably is still more to learn about them. Yeah, intermediate yellow legs. Yeah, I guess be... <laughs> maybe that's the bird from the river there. <laughs> All right. Anybody have any more questions? Well. With that, um, let's thank Andy again. Thank you so much for a wonderful and informative webinar. Um, another one that people will be going back to again when they go down to the LA River and find some weird yellow legs that's all by itself. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, and and yeah, thanks, thank bro. everybody for, uh, for coming and uh, participating and we will see you uh, at the next several webinars, the next one is uh, John Feenstra talking about uh, tube noses uh, of tube noses of Southern California that's coming up. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you, Andy. That was thank great. you, Andy. Thanks, thank you. Andy. Yeah. Thank Super, you, Andy. Yeah, it's great. Well, thank you. Good night. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Mark. Good night, everyone. Thanks, thank you. Everyone.